stories. This happened when I was in elementary school. I was about 10 years old. And I was walking down to the bus stop to meet up with my friends to catch the bus for school. As I am walking to the bus stop, which is about a half a mile down the road, I notice that there is a man that is hiding in the bushes. And the man comes out of the bushes and he asks me what my name is. I tell him that I am not allowed to give out my name or talk to strangers. The man then tells me that he is a co-worker that works with my mother down at the office. My mother works at my mother works at a local office in town that deals with finances or some shit. I don't really know. The man has dirty, unkept, unwashed blonde hair and he reeks of alcohol. He tells me that my mother told me to meet up with him and to and assures me that my mother asked him to take me to school that morning and not to get on the bus. I tell the man that I must confirm with my mother but he tries to assure me again that my mother already said that it was okay and that my mother had informed him that he should take me to school that day. This was before cell phones were widely popular, so I did not have a phone on me. In fact, phones were very, very expensive during this time, and I had no way to call my mother instantly and confirm if what the man was telling me was true. I began to get really nervous, and I am starting to shake. The man then launches at me and tries to grab me, and he says something along the lines of, Come here, you little bitch. I'm gonna fuck you. I began to scream. Because the other day, my mother recently informed me about good touch, bad touch, which is basically my mother warning me about the dangers of strangers and also telling me about certain people that may want to do bad things to me. And I knew that this was the type of person that my mother was referring to. I began running down the road, yelling and screaming for help, when one of my neighbors comes out. Hey, motherfucker, what the fuck you doing? Why are you chasing that girl? Mind your own business, you motherfucker. Bitch, you're on my fucking block? You're in my fucking neighborhood? Chasing my fucking neighbor? Chasing my best friend's fucking daughter? I'll fucking kill you, motherfucker. Thank God that my neighbor happened to come out and say something to the man because the man got really angry and then he walked off. My neighbor then calls my mother from the landline in the house. Remember, we didn't have cell phones back then. And he informs my mother of what had just happened and then he takes me to school along with his daughter, who is one of my friends. So this happened to me at some point in the winter last year. At the time, my husband and I worked night shift jobs. Him at Wawa me as a fast food employee as we had no reason to be up and awake during the day four days off three 12-hour shifts a week the best part about being a night dweller is the fact you can go in the middle of the night to do your shopping 
no lines, no hustle and bustle. You just go at your own leisure and dodge the occasional pallet of stock or graveyard shift worker who's filling up the shelves and probably wishing everyone present would quit taking things away right as you stock them. It's 2 a.m. peak energy time for me and the husband. The Walmart that we are at is in a nice part of town and everything is well lit. Walking around in the middle of the night felt safe. As we walked through the entrance, my eyes immediately drift towards the garden shit. My husband notices a small group of teens being assholes riding around in the electric handicap carts, intentionally smashing into displays, causing some general havoc. He sees these teens causing more trouble near the back of the store, in the shoe section. My attention was on more important things, like looking at toys I have absolutely no need for. We make it to the end of our shopping journey and head towards the self-checkout since they don't bother staffing the actual lanes in the middle of the night. While he scans and bags, I go myself to use the restroom. He checked out and back at the car by the time I come out. So I make my way over to the compact SUV where he's busy loading groceries into the trunk. We hear a bunch of snickers and laughter coming from the car to the left of us. I was aware at the time, but these teens had been sitting in their car the entire time, mocking him over basic things, like what he was wearing and other trivial things. They were calling him a faggot and saying that they were going to beat the fuck out of him and that he was a pussy and he wouldn't do anything about it. I finally arrive and my husband tells me to quickly get in the car. We get in the car and we drive off and the group of teens starts following us. My husband is getting paranoid because he is worried about my safety. The teens are still hollering and yelling insults. We are scared because the teens are really big boys, like football players. They're all at least six foot. My husband and I are not very tall, and we are not very big, and my husband is not very muscular. And I am fat, so I wouldn't be able to defend myself very much anyway. We finally get to the road that leads to our house, and just out of sheer luck, or probably the grace of God, cops happen to be blocking the road for whatever reason. Uh, it looks like they were doing a drug bust or something, and the teenagers notice that the cops are blocking the road, and they quickly turn around and speed off to avoid detection from law enforcement. So, we are so grateful that the police just happened to be doing a drug bust at that time because there is no telling what these teenagers might have done to either of us had they caught up with us. A few years ago, my girlfriend, son, and two dogs went camping. We found the perfect setup for us and our two dogs. We need the privacy since they are intimidating to other dog owners and can be loud when spooked. The first night, my son wanted to sleep by himself in a two-man tent right next to ours. It was maybe two feet away from me and my girlfriend's tent. We made the male dog sleep with him in the tent. The whole first night, neither my girlfriend and I could sleep. We both heard footsteps and they were heavy, not like typical forest critters scampering around the night. I was well armed because I was paranoid from reading recently before departing about 
a man in Florida who was shot and killed in a tent next to his two infant daughters. Both my girlfriend and I had two pistols. The dogs are great at detecting things, and this is why I felt my son could sleep alone because Gunther is completely fearless and nothing would lay a hand on him. We go for a walk down the road. I see an abandoned road where a rusted gate post was covered in vines. Something caught my eye and Gunther starts running down this abandoned road. My heart begins to race because I think it's another family camping like us and he is going to get himself shot or scare some innocent people. So I chase after him as fast as I can. He stops in the road and he hears me yelling his name but I have covered just enough distance to see that there is nobody there and something is off. I yell hello. I get no response. As I get closer, I sense something is wrong. I had all the necessities for a campsite, propane burner, tent, blankets, folding table, but every single item I had been completely destroyed and smashed and torn from what appeared to be claw marks. I walked around in circles, puzzled why anyone would leave all their camping gear. I figured, well, something left in a hurry. So I run over to where my girlfriend is, and my girlfriend starts waving at me, and I immediately draw my pistol. Gunther has continued running into the forest. I continue to call his name, and he stops. My other dog, Sarah, I've had her for five years now. This was the first time in her life she refused to leave my son's side. She was full hair raised, attached to us at the hip again. Again, any time we hike or play, Sarah is in front. I asked my girlfriend, I asked my girlfriend what had happened and she said that she was trying to take a piss. And all of a sudden I felt all my hair raised and I knew someone was watching me, and then I saw Gunther running towards me. We spent a few minutes looking around for signs of anything, and we saw nothing. I decide we are spending one more night since it's too late to pack up and drive home, but we will all be in the big tent together. I put a rope with an alarm around the perimeter. I used a snuff can and some coins, and some keys, and zip-tied it, so if anything hit the rope, it would jingle. As I go to tie the last corner, it looks like someone has done the same thing. I immediately felt someone has stayed here before. My paranoia is now high, but I had to make sure my son and girlfriend felt safe, and at the time, the only thing I could think of was when the evening came around. I made them sit in the truck and I fired my gun into the dirt as a signal to whatever was out there that we were armed. I reassured my family that anyone listening to that now knows we have two dogs and that we are armed. That night, we heard no more footsteps and the dogs never barked. We left the next morning. I watched the missing documentary and I noticed close to where we were camping that weekend and my anxiety was high. I think that that mysterious campsite that I discovered 